Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm inside today because it is cold outside. I woke up this morning, it was 25 degrees. Can't do it, can't do it. I like fall weather. I like 60s. I could even give you 55. 25, not so much. So anyway, I'm in the kitchen today. I'm doing lots of different things. So there's not like just one thing, except that we're in the kitchen and we're, I guess I would call this, this is like a day of preparation, right? So I'm actually canning today. I'm pressure canning beans. I'm pressure canning black beans and kidney beans. I have done a video before when I canned black beans last year. And so I will link that up here if you want like a step-by-step -step, um, video on how to pressure can beans. Um, certainly I can show you pieces and parts of it um, today as we're kind of moving about the kitchen. But if you want like a detail and, and me just only focusing on that one thing, I'll link the video so that you can see it. Um, and I'm also canning kidney beans. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about why I'm doing that and encourage you that if you're not doing that, why you should. Um, but then I'm also like just packaging stuff up in Mylar bags. So it's the week of Thanksgiving. We're hosting Thanksgiving at my house. And so there's just some stuff in my kitchen that I need to kind of just kind of um, declutter, so to speak, and just kind of get stuff taken care of. Y'all know the summer garden is like, it's full throttle full throttle right and so my counters have been covered since the summer garden started and now that we're winding down um i have some stuff that i need to kind of just package up for the freezer i have some stuff that i've gotten from like my azure orders that i haven't been able to kind of like process and to package up so i just got a lot of stuff to do to kind of just clear like the kitchen area of stuff on the counters um, stuff that I've been wanting to do but just haven't had the time and mostly just packaging up stuff like for long-term storage or short-term storage and so short-term storage in Mylar bags and I've also done a video on Mylar bags before as well so I will link that again I'll walk you through step by step on how to do it but today it's just going to be like hanging out with me um, in the kitchen and we're going to talk and get stuff done and have a good time so if you're all about that let's do it okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to um, store some of our black beans that we're not using. So I bought, um, I don't know, I didn't buy this. Somebody gave this to me, which was a blessing. I have a box of 20 pounds of black beans. So that's what we're using to can. And uh, obviously I'm not canning 20 pounds of black beans today, but I'm canning black beans. Um, and so what's left, I'm going to put in um, storage in the Mylar bags and they're gonna go in my root cellar. So that way we'll have dry beans and stuff um, for later on to can later, or if for some reason I needed some and some weren't canned, um, then that's what we would do. But this is more of a long term, long term storage, meaning I don't think I'll go through 20 pounds of black beans in the next six months. I'm canning, once I can um, what I have right now, I think I'm canning like two or three pounds, that'll last us for what we traditionally use black beans for that'll last us the year so i did this video around this time last year if i'm not mistaken and i'm down to the last two jars of black beans which means i need to can more um, but for the rest of these i'm just going to put them in mylar bags so i have my mylar bags here um, i have my impact sealer to seal them up and so we're just going to get these ready to go in the root cellar so you can see how much black beans I have. Um, it was filled up to the top, so you can see it didn't take very much for me to get out enough to can. But all the rest of these, we are going to put in Mylar bags. We're gonna stick an oxygen absorber in there and label it and get it ready for the root cellar. Now, one of the things, um, if I, and I thought about doing this like a video of like essential things to kind of have on hand. And I'm certainly not the expert, but living in the country for the last few years has taught me some things. When I lived in the city, I thought I bought in bulk. I didn't buy in bulk. When I moved to the country for the first time, I called myself buying bulk. I wasn't buying bulk. When the pandemic hit in 2020, it really opened my eyes to what buying bulk means and also how to be prepared, right? And so preparation can take on many different forms depending on the size of your family, um, how you go through food, what you normally buy and all that. But essentially, I like to have stuff on hand, right? 
and um, beans are one of those things to me that is an essential to have on hand. You can do so much with beans, right? If, um, I mean, black beans, you can use it in Mexican stuff, pinto beans, kidney beans, um, green beans. I mean, there's so many different kind of things that you can do with beans, but dried beans to me are a staple to have in any household pantry. It's just an easy go-to, and if times get hard, times get rough, you can always cook some beans, and beans are filling, right? It gives you some sustenance. So I think if you don't have beans, in your pantry, you absolutely should. So the first thing I'm doing is that I have my Mylar bags. This is a gallon size bag. If you're not familiar with Mylar, they come in several different sizes. You can get them in pint, quart, one gallon, one and a half gallon, two gallon, and five gallon. So this is a gallon size bag. And then I'm just, I just label mine with what it is, black beans. You can see that there. And then I just put the month and the year of when I am storing them right so november 2022 so i'm just going to go through label all my bags and then basically y'all i got this big scoop i love this thing i got it from amazon i'm just going to scoop this stuff into the bags and we're going to line them up here we're going to put an oxygen absorber and all of them and then we're going to seal them up just like that so um let me know if there are some beans that you always 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 have in your house in the pantry i would love to know so for me we always have black beans pinto beans kidney beans those are probably and lentils yeah i guess you still call lentil a bean those are the four that i'm gonna have at my house pretty much all the time no matter when you show up if i had to grab it i got it if i had to cook it at the last minute I have those four. So let me know if beans are one of your staples and if so, which um, kind do you automatically always keep in your pantry um, or in your storage? Okay, so I ended up with four um, bags of black beans so that is great um i'm not putting my oxygen absorbers in yet because i'm gonna get all of my bags filled so i can just drop them in there because remember if you're um, using oxygen absorbers you have like a 15 minute window before it's no longer good it only keeps its viability for 15 minutes if it's not sealed so i'm gonna wait but i pulled out some of my more azure standard orders that you guys have seen before but I haven't packaged them up. They've been still in the bags. And again, don't do what I do. Do as I say. Just when you get your order, go ahead <clears throat> and put it in whatever storage vessel or whatever method you normally store, whether it's a glass jar or whatever. Go ahead and do it right then. I mean to, but in the summer, it just gets a little crazy. So I have some black beans. I have some brown basmati rice. And I have some um, yellow corn grits. So I'm going to get these packaged up next. Same thing. I'm gonna label the bag. I'm gonna dump the product in the bag and then we'll stage it here. And that way we'll kind of keep everything um, at the same stage. Then we'll put our oxygen absorbers in there and then we'll seal them all up at the same time. Okay, so now let's change gears. We're gonna go back to that. But the dishwasher got done. I, was ha I had my jars in there to sterilize them. Now, the recent rules are like when i was taught to can you're supposed to sterilize your jars lids and all that but if you uh, go by a ball if you are pressure canning and i think canning anything over 10 minutes you don't necessarily have to sterilize your jars it's going to be sterilized as it's going through the process because these are going to actually um can for 75 minutes i think i'll double check that before i do it but i wanted to get my jars hot quickly. So that's why I put them in the dishwasher to kind of just run them through um, a cycle. So I was waiting on that, which is why I started on the Mylar bags. But now that this is done, I want to go ahead and get this going because while that's doing its thing, I can finish up the Mylar bags. So I have my black beans. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put salt in each jar and it's going to be a half of a teaspoon um, of salt. And I'm not going to use this salt because it's going to be too hard to get into. Let me use this sea salt. So I'm just gonna put a half a teaspoon 
in each jar. And again, I'm not seasoning them past that because I'll season them whenever I use them. And that way it just kind of gives you some versatility that they're not like chili, cumin, black beans, and you wanted some curry black beans or something like that. It just gives you flexibility when it's time to cook it. Now, for my family, we eat Mexican at least once a week. We'll do like nachos, tacos, you know, burritos, whatever the case may be. And so that's how I use my black beans. Other than that, I don't really use black beans in terms of I don't like just make it to have. I could, but buying them out of the store, you get all that sodium, you get all of the other stuff that's in canned food. It's easier, cheaper, and fresher to just make your own. And literally y'all, I do this one time a year. I did it last year and it worked out perfectly. Like I could just literally go grab a jar of black beans every single week. Um, I'm doing it in pint size because that's enough for us, for all the other stuff that we have, you know, put in there. If I need two, then I'll grab two. But it worked perfectly. It's like just going out there, get what you need, dump it, season it. I add cumin, garlic powder, salt. Well, not salt, but garlic powder. And we're good to go. Instead of me having to go to the store, are they? do they have it in stock? Do they not have it in stock? How much is it? It's like $1.50 a can. I can just do it myself. So we are going to just... Lay, ladle these up and leave like a head of head inch a one inch <laughs> head space is what we're doing um and again this video is not necessarily showing you how to do canning i'm just taking you along with me through the process today um as i just get some stuff done in the kitchen because i wanted to talk to you so one of the things that i really wanted to talk about today is just making sure that you're prepa that you're preparing right preparing for what barbara preparing for if there is another pandemic preparing for if somebody in your family loses a job and you don't have the means to buy the stuff that you normally do uh, preparing in case somebody in your family needs help and you can help them so you fill in the blank but i think it's good to be prepared and have stuff on hand you know how there are times, and I've definitely had this in my life before, where I used to live paycheck to paycheck. And some of you may still, you know, be there. And that's not what this is about. But I don't think that we should be, if we can, if we have the means to, on some level, I don't think that we should be living um, grocery store visit to grocery store visit. Does that make sense? So how many weeks could you go without going to the grocery store? And I remember for me, I went to the grocery store every single week, not just because it was a habit or routine, it was because I had to, right? I had to, like we were out of stuff, we couldn't cook nothing, couldn't make nothing until that grocery store visit happened, right? And that doesn't work, especially, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't work. It's not the most efficient way for it to work, especially if you're busy, especially if you have a lot going on and i don't know anybody in this day and age that's just not busy right so it's not ideal to live like that from one grocery store visit to the next um because you never know what can happen you may get sick and you can't go and if you're the if you're the person in your house like me i'm the one that does the grocery store shopping can my husband go pick up a few things yes but that's i'm gonna give him a specific list with brand size pictures colors all of that and he's gonna go get what I need but I'm not traditionally sending him to the store for the main regular weekly bi-weekly grocery shopping right but what happens if I get sick or if I'm out of town if we are living that on every Monday I go to the grocery store and on Sunday night if I don't go to the grocery store tomorrow we're not gonna have anything to eat that's not real practical that's not efficient that's not any of that. So I have really been trying, especially since I moved to the country and especially since the pandemic is to have stuff on hand and be prepared. And that way, if something happens, if there's a day you don't feel like cooking, if there's a day that you get home late, if there's a day, well, somebody stops by your house uninvited and unannounced and you need to prepare them some food, you can do that. Why? Because you have some stuff in surplus. You have some stuff in surplus. So let me know again.
how you guys feel um, about that. You can see I got all of my jars filled there. So I'm going to just go back in and um, add the liquid up to an inch head space and go ahead and cover them up. And then we're going to come back and keep having this conversation. Look at all my bags. They are done. They are sealed. I think I have like 12 or 13. I'll turn the camera around and I'll kind of show you what I have. So we are percolating right along. The black beans only have 18 minutes left. So that's great. And oh, you process them for an hour and 15 minutes. So while they've been doing their thing, um, hour and 15 minutes for pint size jars. If you have quart size jars and it's more than that. But while it's been doing its thing, um, I got all my bags filled and filled up some more. So I have um, two bags of black beans. No, four bags of black beans. Um, I have two bags of pinto beans. I have a bag of yellow corn grits. I have two bags of dried lemon slices. I have a bag of brown basmati rice. I have two bags of dry roasted peanuts. That's what I use to make my homemade peanut butter. I've done a video about that as well. I can link up here. And then I have two, um, two bags of small red beans. So not a kidney bean, but like a small red bean that you can use for like red beans and rice and things like that. So y'all, I feel accomplished. I feel accomplished. So it's one thing to buy it, but it's another thing to store it and to put it up. So don't do as I do, do as I say, and just do your stuff when you order it from Azure Standard or when you get it from the grocery store and all of that. But I'm glad to get that part done. And you may ask, why am I using Mylar bags? So I'm using Mylar bags because for the most part, all of this stuff is more long-term storage. And what I'm calling long-term storage for me, if I know that I'm not going to use it and use it up in the next six months or so, then I kind of consider that in my mind long-term storage. Like there's no way I'm gonna go through all of those beans in the next six months. Like they'll be in the root cellar for years, you know, years, years, you know, however, I, and I already have some beans in the root cellar. So this is just extra, right? I try to, my goal is to have like a year's worth of stuff of whatever the product is. That's my goal. Um, am I completely there on everything? No, I'm not, but that's my goal and that's what I try to do. So when I start to get low, then I'll reorder, rebuy or whatever. And one of the things that's really helpful when you are in this preparatory mode, bulk buying mode is that you're able to get things a lot cheaper, right? Now buying in bulk, it sounds like a lot at first because you're like, man, I'm going to pay $45 for this. But if you are only doing that once a year for that product, then think about how many trips to the grocery store you've eliminated. Think about how you've kind of sealed your cost in, meaning as costs rise and, and, and inflation rises, you got it at that price, right? And so it's a done deal. So for example, um, I bought a whole lot of pecans and I can't remember if I shared it on here or not, but I bought a whole lot of pecans from Azure Standard. Um, and I usually buy pecans like 20 pounds a year, so to speak. And I bought, and I've been doing this for the last two years, and it has worked out great. Um, because next week, when it's time to make a pecan pie for Thanksgiving, guess who don't have to go to the store and fight for some pecans? I don't have to fight for it because I have plenty in my storage, right? So the pecans, you know nuts are expensive. So let's just say that the pecans in the store right now are running around 8 or $9 a pound, which is not far fetched at all. Um, and let's say, and I don't remember what I paid for on my Azure standard. I'll try to look it up and pop it up on the video if I can find it. But it was something like, I don't know, maybe five or $6 a pound, right? So if I bought 20 pounds at five or $6 a pound, do you see how my price is constant? It's almost like it's set in time because I got it at that price versus if I did not buy it in bulk. And every time I needed pecans, I go to the store and I get a pound here and a pound there at eight or nine dollars a pound. Do you see how over time I'm spending way more money? But if you buy it in bulk, you're going to save money. You're going to be way more cost efficient and you're going to have it when you need it. 
I'll tell you um, a funny story. Y'all, when the pandemic happened, remember, your girl thought she was country-fied. I thought I was buying in bulk. But one of the things that I panicked about was toilet tissue. And y'all, I could not find toilet tissue anywhere. I will never forget it. That first week when the world kind of shut down, we probably had, I don't know, maybe three or four packs of toilet tissue. In my mind, I'm thinking that's bulk. That's not bulk when you have a family of four. And now everybody's going to be at home all at the same time, all day long, all week long. That four packs of tissue can go just like that. So I'm panicked because I go to every store. I cannot find toilet tissue. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't make toilet tissue. That's not something that you can just, if you know how to make it, let me know. Versus if it's, I can't find milk. You know what? I, I actually know how to make milk. You know, I can make milk for us if things get tighter in a pinch and we can't find it. Right. And I've done a video on that before too. Um, I can make bread. I can't make toilet paper, y'all. I can't make toilet tissue. And so I panicked because I'm like, what am I going to do if I don't find toilet tissue? Now, long story short, did I find toilet tissue? Yes. But since the pandemic, I have upped my game in terms of buying toilet tissue. I'm not going to say I'm 100% covered, but I can assure you, your girl has more than four packs of toilet tissue in this house on any given day. Okay? Any given day. My kids will tell you. I start to get real nervous when I can't find toilet tissue, right? <laughs> so, because that's not something that you can just, you know, bake on your own, right? So, the point is this, is that when you prepare and when you are prepared, when things happen in life, when things happen in the news, when things happen in the world that you have no control over, you have a piece of sanity and I'm not going to say control, but you have some type of assurance that, okay, things may be happening, but I at least have something to take care of my family, right? And so what's the message? The message is this, is that I really, I really want to stress that if you're watching this video, make sure that you're preparing and you say, for what I want you to fill in the blank, right? I just want you to be prepared. Part of living this homestead life or just to me it's just good practice good business you see what's happening in the news you see what's happening in the world you see that the prices in the store are going up so fast that it is going to outprice us and so think about what can you do as a member of your family to help strengthen whatever you have at home and be more prepared than maybe you were last week. Maybe more prepared than you were in the pandemic. Maybe more prepared than you were last year, right? Life happens, right? I'm sure there are some of you whose spouses have lost jobs. You may have lost a job. And your grocery store trips had to be real strategic, right? You ever been there? I've been there before where I've had times in my life where I go to the grocery store willy-nilly, right? Like meaning... I got a list, but I'm not looking at prices. I'm not paying that much attention. But I have had other times in my life where I am couponing it. Uh, and there's no judgment. If you, I'm not that I personally don't like keeping up with the coupons. I don't mind couponing. But when I did it, it was a chore. Because you got to be on top of it. I digress. What I'm saying is there have been times in my life where I had to be real strategic when I went to the grocery store, like I had to look at unit prices. I had to make sure that, okay, it can't go over this amount. Um, and I'm still very cautious about what I buy and the money that I spend. But my point is this, is that when life happens and you may not have the means or the resources that you have today, are you going to be able to provide for your family? Now, y'all know I believe in God, and I believe that God, his word says that he will supply all of our need. So I'm not trying to take the place of God. What I'm trying to do is just do my part as a part of my family to do what I can when I can. When I cannot, God absolutely is taking care of me throughout all of this. So I hope my message doesn't get lost. All I'm saying is make sure that you prepare, and that could look so many different ways. If you normally buy two cans of beans, Every single week, buy three, 
right? Put one up in your long-term storage so that you have it and then keep using the two that you always use, right? If you normally buy one big thing of toilet paper from Costco's once a month, if you can, buy two, right? If you don't know how to make bread and it's been on your list to learn how to make bread, then get on YouTube, find somebody, watch them, get your flour, learn, by trial and error and learn how to make bread so if something happens snow lost job sick no money you can make bread for your family even if the shelf is empty if they don't have any nature's wheat sunbeam i don't know all them of different kind of ezekiel bread if they don't have any of that you can make your own and again that looks different for everybody okay Everybody looks different. Some people have more money than time. Some people have more time than money. Find out where you are on the continuum. And all I'm saying is do what you can do. Just take the very next step in front of you. If that's, I only have one extra dollar a week and I can buy one more can of beans that's 89 cents, do that. If you can buy one more 25 bag pound of flour, do that. Do something to prepare and have your family in a better situation today than it was yesterday, right? And then obviously we um, pray and we trust God to take care of us for the things that we cannot do. But don't not do anything when you can, okay? That's all I'm saying. So that's what I'm doing today is just, I'm kind of, when I say preparing, like getting some stuff done that I've bought to prepare, but I haven't kind of finished the process. So I got all of my Mylar bags done. I shouldn't say all. I still have more stuff to do, but that's all I'm doing today. And I'm gonna spread it out over the week. My black beans only have seven more minutes. So that'll be done. And I ended up with 11 pint sized jars of black beans. Um, seemed like last year, I don't remember, I have to go back and look at my video, see how many I got. I should have probably done, I should have probably done one more pound, but that's okay, no problem. And then I still have my kidney beans to do. So with the kidney beans, I'll use that for like chili or refried beans or something like that. Y'all, I made chili this past weekend. And normally, I, you know, I have cans of beans, you know, I, I, I'm really trying to get away from the canned stuff. But I have cans of beans in my pantry. I didn't have any this time. Um, and so I decided I wasn't going to go to the store and buy any. I decided I was going to make my own beans. One is healthier. I know what the ingredients are. I know what's in it. And so I made my own beans. And I had been made kidney beans and had them on the shelf, but we had used all of them. And I just never replenished it. So the kidney beans is just to replenish what I already know to do and what I should have already been done and that I hadn't done. So that'll be nice to have on the pantry shelf, again, for quick and easy things. Uh, another thing of the reason why it's good to prepare, whether it's frozen, dehydrated, canned, or anything like that, is that, like, for example, my husband, he doesn't like to cook, right? Can he cook? Like, he can get a meal He can get a meal through on the table if he had to. He does not enjoy it. It is a labor of love if he has to do it. And so when I'm not here or when I don't feel well or I'm sick, he can pop open a can of beans and add the ingredients to it that I tell them to add. And then all of a sudden you got spaghetti or you got chili or something like that. So again, the preparation, whether it's dehydrating, whether it's canning, freezing, having stuff on hand at your house where somebody doesn't have to go out to the store, spend money, search, go to five stores to find a product. It just makes it a lot easier for the whole family. Okay. A whole lot easier for the whole family. So anyway, thanks for hanging out in my kitchen with me a little bit today as I was just getting some stuff done, but I felt um, like I just wanted to kind of share what I was doing today and the reason why. And really, I feel like I'm just, you know, kind of catching up. Um, but my goal this fall um, slash winter is to preserve something every week. That is my goal. Because now that the summer has ended, I have a little bit more time because I'm not in the garden as much. And so I'm trying to get like my pantry and root cellar storage stocked up. Uh, is what I'm trying to do. So I'm taking inventory of what do I have, 
What do I not have? What do I need to order? What do I need to buy? So that way, again, I'm being strategic. I'm not just spending money. I'm not buying stuff that we already have, nor am I thinking I have it and I don't. So this is a good time of the year because a lot of you will be off during the holidays. You're at home more. Take inventory of what you have. Know what you need to buy. Be ahead of the game. Like next week is Thanksgiving. If you know you're hosting Thanksgiving, there's going to be tons of people at your house and you know you need cranberry sauce. If you're not going to make it, you better go to the store and get it this week. But you don't have to go to five stores and try to make cranberry. I mean, try to find cranberry sauce. And I look, I got a video on cranberry sauce too. If you need to know how to make homemade cranberry sauce. So again, prepare. Meaning think about stuff ahead of time. Get what you can when you can. Keep your costs low. Buy a little extra. Freeze it up. Can it up. Dehydrate it. Store it in my lar. Whatever fits your fancy. Okay? But in all things, remember, this is all a journey. And we're going to continue to grow together. Thank you so much. I don't take it for granted that you stop and spend a part of your day with a part of my day. I really appreciate it. If you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. And until next time, I'll pop a couple of videos up here. And remember, it's all a journey. Let's grow together. See you next time, friends.